We are privileged tonight to have with us Professor Cengiz Akhtar as our spe speaker. Professor Akhtar is currently senior scholar at the Istanbul Policy Center, Sabanji University, and he contributes regularly to today's Zaman and other influential Turkish periodicals. Professor Akhtar is a powerful voice for uh, progressive reform in Turkey and has long campaigned for recognition of the uh, genocide by the Turkish state and by Turkish civil society. Tonight he will speak on revisiting Turkey's policy towards religious minorities on the centenary of the Armenian genocide. Let us give a very warm welcome to Professor Akhtar. Well, you haven't heard anything yet, so don't. don't. <laughs> Good evening to all, and uh, thank you to, Christi uh, to Christian Solidarity International and Dr. Eibner for giving me this opportunity to, to talk uh, in, in Zurich. Uh, Switzerland uh, is, a, is a country which is dear to me. I spent seven years as a director at UN uh, in Geneva. Uh, I happen to come to Zurich, beautiful country, beautiful people. Uh, thank you, and again, good evening. Um, so the, the, the title of the, this, this talk is Turkey's Policy. What is Turkey's policy? Is there one Turkey? I don't think so. There is less and less one Turkey. Is there, there is one official Turkey on the one hand, and there is... Uh, the social Turkey or the other Turkey, the Turkey who really thinks over what happened to uh, these lands 100 years ago. Let me give you a few examples um, before going into the details of, uh, of the memory works that are taking place in the, at the level of the Turkish society. Let me give you uh, some snapshots about uh, what is happening nowadays uh, in Turkey, but uh, in the official Turkey, you would be surprised. There is an Armenian Catholic Church in Turkey. Uh, they are in minority compared to uh, the, the, the main uh, apostolic church. Well, a legal status has been recently granted to the Armenian Catholic Church of Istanbul, headed by a friend of mine, uh, the Reverend Karabaydzar Levon Zekian, uh, who is a, a very important scholar from Ka Foscari University in Venezia. If, uh, it's uh, by the state, of course. The state has granted a legal status to the Armenian Catholic Church of Turkey. Curious. Um, a second example. Um, this year, again in Venice, uh, the, the, it, it happens that uh, 2015 is the, uh, is the year of Biennale in, in Venice. It's, it will start on the 9th of May. It's, it's pretty soon. The artist who will represent Turkey uh, the, and who will be, you know, performing its uh, his uh, his installation art in the uh, in the in the Turkish pavilion, official Turkish pavilion, will be Sarkis Zabunyan, a very famous Turkish Armenian artist. Very curious, isn't it? And you can be sure that knowing Sarkis very well, uh, he, uh, you know, he will go ahead with, uh, with what he has in mind uh, in terms of genocide and other harsh realities of Turkey and the region. A third example. Um, Syriacs have been granted to open a primary school in Istanbul, in a land given by the, uh, by the Catholics, a first ever since 1928, where their schools were closed 
by the Kemalist Republic, completely shut down. 1928, so the first time since 1920, the primary school has opened. Um, Religious foundations belonging to non-Muslim minorities, 10% of them have been given back to these uh, religious foundations. Always, this is, these are official state actions. Last year, on the 23rd of April, not on the 24th, the genocide day, but on the 24th, the 3rd of April, uh, the then Prime Minister, Mr. Erdogan, as you may recall, uh, has made a statement for the first time in the history of the Turkish Republic, sharing the pains of the descendants of the of the of those who died in the massacres. Of course, he didn't use the word genocide. Last, not least. Uh, Last week, uh, I mean a few days ago, on the 26th of March, uh, the, 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 the great synagogue of Edirne at the Bulgarian border has been restored and opened. Uh, it was, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a jewel. It's a, it dates back to 1909. It's a replica of, uh, of a synagogue uh, which... Uh, which uh, the, the of, of Vienna, which was de destroyed by the Nazi. Uh, and it was abandoned uh, since the departure, forcibly departure, of the Jews from Edirne in 1930s. Again, an, a building which was restored by the public monies, which, uh, which opened up and uh, for uh, and uh, it will be it will be not just a museum, but it will be that there will be Jewish offices where it will take place. Um, same um, happened, you may recall, in 2007 to another uh, uh, religious monument, the Surp Harch of Van Akhtamar Island, where, which was restored again by the public monies. So what happened? I mean, what happened to this Turkish state which otherwise uh, you know, is, is still you know quite adamant of uh, on not recognizing what happened to the Armenians, to the Syriacs, to all other non-Muslim minorities in those lands. So how come they dare to to act that way? You know. Um, in a, a way which, which was absolutely unthinkable a few years ago under the Kemalist classical Turkish governments. And these are Muslims. This is, this is political Islam, you know, the ruling AK parties. So what, why? I mean, how come they there? Well, they... Muslims, together with Kurds, started mid-80s to, to, to become political actors in Turkey. Of course, they were, you know, they had difficulties to become political actors. They were rejected right away by the classical paradigm of, the, of, of Kemalism, of the Turkish state. But they struggled. They continued to, to work hard. Of course, the Kurds have taken the arms, but the Muslims have taken the municipalities and they have be become um, political actors. So much so that in 2002, they reached the center of the power and they won the elections. This two big group, their empowerment, as uh, it's an extremely important concept of political science. Well, th this empowerment has helped tremendously to question, to, um, to put some question marks, to, to, to challenge this beautiful, homogeneous nation that was invented in Turkey in the Ottoman Empire first and then uh, in Turkey afterwards. 
a nation in which there was no difference, no different people, no, um, no non-Muslim. And, uh, and this uh, fantastic, homogeneous, um, brave nation, at least the narrative and the tally and the history of this nation is gone. Because the Kurds and the Muslims were not allowed, you know, as, as Kurds and Muslims within this nation. As soon as they became actors, they helped to open up the Pandora's box, which was full of other identities who were, you know, either erased or hidden or simply, you know, uh, uh, neglected or ignored by the official narrative. Moreover, these two big groups are not shy of talking about non-Muslims. They, uh, because they were not the ones who were taking the decisions of their annihilation. Of course, they were they were uh, operational. I mean, especially Kurds, uh, you know, are those who, you know, who, who, who killed, who, who massacred the Armenians, mainly. And some Muslim clerics were, not all, but were um, quite uh, functional in calling, uh, uh, you know, the, their followers to, to kill as much uh, Christian as, as possible, to go to uh, the heaven and this sort of things. I repeat, not, not all. But they always thought that they were manipula manipulated by, at the time, Istanbul, the capital city, uh, and by the state. I take it. I don't mind if they find an excuse, an argument to, to recall what happened and to, to say mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. We were involved, but we were man manipulated. This is extremely important. And this is how we are slowly getting to, the, um, to, the, to what I call the memory works that are taking place at the level of the society in the country. Um, they, um, but be before g getting there, uh, let me uh, tell you about the, the paradoxes of this state uh, to, to show you, uh, you know, how um, I would say schizophrenic and paradoxical is the, the state action when it comes to the memory works. I, I mentioned six or seven examples. Uh, now, le let's look at the other side of the corner, or, the, or of, the, of the coin, actually. Um, I mentioned the legal status of, of Armenian Catholic uh, Church, but the Greek Halki Seminary remains closed. I mentioned the installation artist. Turkey has put heavy pressure on the Geneva authorities to cancel the so-called Reverbère de la Mémoire. Ha. See? Um, I mentioned the, uh, the, the religious foundations get, getting confiscated property. This is fine. But uh, the landmark the decision of the, uh, of the Court of Cassation in Turkey still uh, you know, has the, this 1974 landmark decision where the non-Muslims are, are considered as foreigners. Turkish president made this 23rd of April declaration, but uh, this year, the 24th of April, will be commemorated in the Dardanelles 
which uh, in the Dardanelles, uh, to to recall what happened to the ANZAC, the uh, Australia or uh, New Zealand Army Corps. Unfortunately for the government, the ANZAC Day is the 25th of April, not the 24th. So, um, as for the, the, the synagogue, maybe the synagogue is open now and re restored and shines and it is beautiful. Well, the buildings uh, might be protected, but the people who visit them are subjected to regular hate speech and threats, as put by one of uh, the, the visitors, a Jew, a Turkish Jew. So, full of paradoxes there when we, we enter the classical state space, I would say. But here we have, despite all these contradictions and paradoxes and schizophrenia, we have, with this, with this government, and with uh, with the with the hegemonic political forces in Turkey, both the Muslims and Kurds, an advantage. They let the Turkish society go the memory works way. They don't impede the memory works that are taking place more and more in depth in the Turkish society. They are not putting brakes like the Kemalists would. I will give you just one example before going into the de details because they are worth mentioning it. The word genocide that uh, John Eibner just mentioned. Well, I mean, it's still forbidden by the law. The, uh, the Turkish Penal Code, Article 305, still forbids to use the, the, the use of the, 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 of the word. But no one is punished, and the word is, is everywhere, in every mouth. And people talk openly now about genocide. Not only talk, but make even, you know, develop and uh, uh, start studies on the genocide. So something really, uh, you know, uh, new is happening in Turkey. This is why it's, it's more and more difficult today to talk about one Turkey or Turkey's policy or about the genocide. It, it, it won't reflect the reality. There is one official Turkey which is still there despite all these contradictions. Please don't forget them. Uh, but at the end of the day, genocide is still a taboo for the Turkish state, the, the, the big state apparatus. But for the society and the, for the active, you know, uh, elements and forces of the society, you know, the, the things have changed dramatically and will certainly continue to, uh, to, to be so. Let me give you um, some uh, details about these memory works to help you understand what, uh, really, what is really happening in, 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 in Turkey in terms of memory works, in terms of facing the past, in terms of recalling the, uh, you know, the massacres, in terms of discussing uh, you know, the, the, what happened 100 years ago in terms of sharing the pain and empathizing with the others. Four clusters. First one, academia and publishing. Well, they have, uh, you know, they were quite shy in the beginning, but uh, now it's in full swing. I mean, the academia is extremely active. Publishing houses are blossoming. And uh, whereas when I was a student in, in Istanbul, it was impossible to find a single book about the genocide or other, you know, massacres that happened in Anatolia. Now there are books that are translated. They are, the, 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 everything is available. 
and uh, not to mention the, not not to mention the the, 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 the major uh, you know opus of Raymond Kevorkian, who was just published last week, the genocide of Armenians, 1,200 pages book, which details you know uh, uh, village by village uh, and uh, you know uh, city by city what happened to the Armenians in 1915 and 1916. But the, the, the pioneer work was done by uh, my friend Raghav Zarakolu, who, who opened the, the, the first ever publishing house, Belge, in 1977. That's a long time ago. And uh, he was really a kind of, you know, vanguard, pioneer, a very courageous man, you know, who Every single book that he was uh, helping to, 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 to be translated uh, was pursued by the, by, the, by the authorities. But he never gave up. Aras, an Armenian publishing house, continued the, 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 the good job. And today, uh, in terms of publishing, almost all publishing houses in Turkey publish books about uh, what happened 100 years ago in, the, in, the, in Anatolia. Not especially about the, 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 about the genocide only. I mean, it was many, many other things that happened. Um, Kurds, they, have, they, ha they had their own publications in Kurdish. Of course, as no one reads Kurdish, you know, people were not paying enough attention, but they were publishing. They were talking about what happened to their fellow uh, you know, na neighbors, because the Armenians and Kurds were always living together in the eastern parts of Anatolia. Scholars, you know, again, vanguard research by scholars. I mean, you, you may know at least one of them, Taner Akçam, is definitely one, but he's not the only one. Now, the, the most interesting, uh, you know, development is that the young researchers now are more and more interested in, in searching for the reality. And there are more and more PhD theses uh, you know, uh, and the, the, the search for you know for the for the past and the, the, either in Turkey or or elsewhere. But uh, the the curiosity now is definitely there. Conferences, I mean, countless, countless conferences after the landmark conference in two thousand five, which was. You know, in the beginning, the, the the state was very unhappy with it, and but it happened the end of the day, the Ottoman Armenians, the fate of Ottoman Armenians, that was the first ever conference. Now, you, we can't even count them. I mean, there are so many conferences that are taking place, not only about the Armenians, Syriacs, Jews, uh, Kurds, r r Greeks, uh, etc. So, um, and the conferences, you know, these sort of conferences used to take place uh, just a few years ago, 10 years ago, abroad, mainly in Europe, you know, or in the United States. Now they are taking place in Turkey. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's something to, 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 to be taken into account. Um, and not only in Istanbul, by the way, but they, they are also taking place in, in places like Diyarbakir, which is, you know, which is a Kurdish town, or Mardin, which is a very famous town, you know, dear to Syriacs and, uh, and Nestorians and Chaldeans. Um, a diaspora scholar is, is teaching in, in Turkey since 2009. Famous uh, li literature critic, Marc Nishanyan of uh, French nationality. He teaches in, in Sabancı University. Every year he has a seminar. So these are new and very encouraging developments which needs to, to be noted and taken into account. The second cluster is what I call the individual memory search. In Turkey now, you know, to before, to call someone an Armenian origin, you know, to, to talk about uh, the Armenian ancestors or Greek ancestors for the matter or Syriac ancestors, that was a sin. 
that was impossible. That was, you know, people were themselves afraid of talking about this sort of things. Now, more and more pe people are searching for their ancestors and proudly mentioning their Armenian grandmothers, unfortunately, because the boys were extensively slaughtered, but the girls were kept. So they became grandmothers, mainly of Kurdish families. There is a say among the Kurds who say, I mean, there is no Kurdish family without an Armenian grandmother. Uh, so, but pe people are now talking about these things and searching for the roots. And uh, this is something, again, very, very precious, very, uh, very important. You may have heard about the, this book by my friend who happens to be the lawyer of the slain Randink, my friend, uh, Fethiye Çetin, you know, her, good, her book about uh, the so-called grandmother, uh, my grandmother, uh, an Armenian-Turkish memoir. It was published in English uh, in 2012 in the Verso books. Uh, there are 13 or more now, 13, 14 books of the same, you know, of the same nature. Uh, people looking for their grandmothers. My grandmother here and my grandmother there. And she was not talking and she was like this and like that. Before, impossible, you know, to, um, to talk uh, about that, to, to even mention it. So... Uh, another interesting development regarding the, this uh, search for the roots or the, you know, is the uh, Islamized, forcibly Islamized uh, Armenians. In 1915, the Turkish government at the time, actually the Ottoman government to be more accurate, has issued a decree allowing Armenians to convert. They converted in some places so much so, so that the government annulled uh, the decree and came with another one forbidding more conversions. Conversion helped, of course, many Armenians to save their lives. Uh, but some, you know, that there were some who, despite the conversion, were still slaughtered, but it's another one. But not, I mean, the, the, the majority's life were, were, lives were, were, were saved. So these people always existed. The state knew about it. The, uh, their neighbors knew about it. They still know about it. They, they talk about this Armenian village. They are 100% Muslim, but they still talk about the Armenian village. Nevertheless, these people are now openly talking about their Armenian roots. And this is also, again, a very, very healthy development. Some people put their figure, the, the figure to millions. Uh, as the descendants of the of the converted uh, Armenians, uh, it's I don't think it's exaggerated, uh, because some, according to the Armenian sources, some three hundred thousand or so were you know uh, the, the, their lives were were spared thanks to the conversion. By the way, so it it easily makes you after one hundred years you know, a population uh, of, of millions. So, you know, as no one was capable of or openly talking about the genocide, people were not able to talk about these sort of consequences of, if I may say so, of the genocide, like the, the converted Armenians. Now, now that, I mean, the, the Pandora's box is wide open. You know, now the, the people come out, among them there are ho the, those who reconvert. There are some Armenians now who reconvert to, uh, of 
course, the, the church is not happy because uh, they don't know much about uh, the Christianity, but uh, they still want to be baptized. And of course, they, uh, they are baptized and, and learn slowly the, the, the religion. And, and for the matter, the language, because they don't speak Armenian either. Um, the, uh, the third cluster of these wor uh, memory works uh, is the public awareness and visibility. Non-Muslim minorities are literally discovered by the Turkish society. I mean, Turks suddenly discovered their non-Muslim fellows. They were hiding before. You know, they were okay in minority, very much in minority, although they were not in minority before getting slaughtered. Very important to, do, to take note of that. But, you know, people are youngsters, you know, who never heard of, there's still some, you know, youngsters in Turkey who, when uh, p people say, especially for the Greeks, by the way, uh, they, uh, you know, there are 2,000 remaining Greeks in Turkey, <laughs> no more, and mainly in Istanbul. And uh, when they meet uh, that Turkish, uh, you know, uh, uh, fellows and in the street, and they say, "Oh, you, you, you are a tourist. Uh, you came. Uh, to, how you like Istanbul? You know, <laughs> you know. So to tell you, they, 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 they were there before Turks. <laughs> so that's. Uh, um, but never the mind. Nevertheless, I mean, this uh, visibility and the public awareness is developing by the day. Um, Armenians had, I recall, only one uh, association, you know, this uh, friendship association or, you know, association of those who come from a specific village, etc. Now there are eight associations. They are, of course, all in Istanbul because no one remains in Anatolia. But still, there are, these associations are, you know, active. And they have, you know, as we say in French, they is on pignon sur rue. I mean, they have, they, they are public. They don't hide anymore. They call it Association of Arab Gir, for instance. I don't know if there are millions in, in the audience, but uh, um, <coughs> newspapers. I mean, of course, they always existed, but uh, they were not, not forbidden. But they were in Armenian language. Agos, the paper of Grant had the genius idea of publishing in two languages, but mainly in Turkish, to make sure that Turks will finally learn about Armenians, that the Armenians do exist and have existed before in these lands. Extremely important. 96, you know, the creation of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of Agos newspaper. It will make 20 years in the next year. Um, again, public awareness, visibility. The pogroms of 6th and 7th of September 1955. The first commemoration took place at the 50th anniversary. That hit mainly the Greeks, but also the Armenians and all non-Muslims in town, even some Muslims. The guys were, were so, you know, enraged that, that, that uh, they did destroy the, the, the property and the, and the shops and etc. No one knew about it. And suddenly we, dis we, we started, uh, I was involved in it, and uh, a commemorative, uh, you know, exhibition and, uh, and some panels. Now, since 2005, it's every year. Every year there's a commemoration. People said why it happened, etc., etc. Same for the 1964 expulsion of the remaining Greeks in town. That was the last year. Now it's in the radar of the Turkish public. Again, public awareness, visibility. Diaspora organizations are coming back to Turkey 
fascinating. We would have never thought of, the, of it before. Civilitas Foundation, which is normally based in, uh, in Yerevan, is, has opened an office in Istanbul. Another one called the National Congress of Western Armenians. They are coming and going. They are <laughs> intending to open an office, Yerkir, which means, uh, you know, land, the, 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 uh, the country. Uh, Terre et Culture, a French organization, they are also opening an office. And, uh, and of course, as I mentioned, the visibility and the, and the awareness, the word genocide, now it's in, in every mouth. Um, I mentioned in the, the, uh, the descendants of the Islamized Armenians. There's another group which is also coming, you know, out of the Pandora's box. The righteous people, those who saved the Armenians, there were many, of course, when it was impossible to talk about the, uh, you know, the, the, what happened to the Armenians per se, it was you know, irrelevant to talk about those who saved them. Now that, that uh, you know, one can talk about what happened to, to them, one can also talk about those who saved lives. And it's extremely important because there are many. There are some public figures, there are officials, you know, uh, you know mayors and uh, uh, you know, governors, sub-governors, etc., who refuse to obey the, uh, the orders of Istanbul at the time, but also anonymous people who simply decided to save the lives of their fellow uh, citizens and villagers, actually, many. So now, the, 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 you know, the, this awareness is starting. So you know, people are talking about families. Are talking? Yes, we. I remember now. I mean, my mother was telling me that the, our grandfather has saved so many, you know, uh, Armenians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are also those savers, you know, who saved uh, lives just to keep the kids. Huh? <laughs> That's also. That that's also, I mean, something to to to, um, to be taken into account. I mean, it was a very uh, they had vested interests in in saving lives, if I may say so. Um, again, public authorities. I mean, the, the the public awareness, the the names, the old names of the towns are you know claimed by the locals. Now, because there are many towns who were renamed in Turkish. Now people are, you know, asking the, 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 the names of the town to get the, to, to, you know, to the, and, and many of them are of Armenian origin, of course, or mixed Kurdish, Armenian, Syriac, uh, Arabic, of course. Um, exhibitions about the life of Armenians. Armenians used to live here. You know, uh, the, 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 through the uh, carte postale, you know, the, 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 there's a collection of, uh, of, of carte postale because otherwise, I mean, the, 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 uh, in the in eastern parts of the country, no, nothing remains Armenians anymore, uh, unfortunately. So the, the carte postale is, are, are, are very helpful. There's, there are itinerant exhibitions, you know, going in, in, in various towns in, 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 Tur in Turkey. And people are amazed because they recognize the, the street and uh, we, where they live. And they see buildings which don't exist anymore. But of course, they are, they are puzzled. I mean, they are interested and they, you know, they start to think. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> they were Armenians. Where are they now? You know? um, <coughs> the third cluster, uh, I, uh, third or fourth? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, the, the fourth, actually. The religious and cultural diversity. Incredible things are happening there, again, you know, at the level of the so society. The restoration works. I mentioned the, the synagogue uh, of Edirne, uh, Adrianopolis, and uh, 
and also Sur Parch in Van, in the eastern parts of the country. Uh, but also there are many others like uh, Surp Krikor Luzarevic of Caesarea in Kayseri, uh, Vortvots Vorotmans uh, in Istanbul, um, Surp Kiragos in Diyarbakir, uh, little churches in, in the western parts of the country, um, Greek churches mainly in Alanya and the Bodrum, a Georgian church, Oshki in the, in Erzurum. Uh, you know, of course, the pe people are interested now. The locals, the villagers, are interesting in refurbishing all those churches because they think that tourists will come. <laughs> so again, I mean, there is a kind. Of, but nevertheless, twenty years ago, they would never dare, you know, to ask for the state or the public authorities or, or you know, start to collect money to restore the dying church which is in the town. Now they dare. And this is new and very important, which means that they are ready to recall what is happening and what, was ha what happened 100 years ago. Um, masses now are celebrated in uh, in many of them you know okay it's not every day it's probably mine no it's not mine um the the one famous monastery it's a greek monastery in uh, sumela in uh, by the uh, by the black sea a beauty uh, the it uh, it took place uh, for the first time four years ago, the Ecumenical Patriarch uh, was celebrating the Mass. And now it's every year uh, at uh, Panaya. I mean, it's on the 15th of August. Um, the architects of Turkey, mainly Armenians and uh, Greeks, they were. Well, I mean, there are exhibitions now recalling their, their, their good work and the and uh, how they you know they built you know the, the the buildings which now belong to turkey or the the, the private people or the, the the state but they were the, uh, the 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 architects and the people learn about them and they hear that oh well, did this palace uh, this so famous dolmabahce palace for instance was built by uh, the, the very important Armenian uh, family architect and uh, Balians. You know, they, they, they rest on, now the, the the descendants live in Rome. Um, for the first time, an Armenian cemetery in Malatya, a city uh, of uh, with, with an important Armenian population, is restored. You know, usually. Those who erase the memory start by erasing the cemeteries. It's, it's very classical. It's everywhere. Um, now, you know, the, 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 uh, the, 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 what remains of the, uh, of the cemetery, although hardly any Armenian live in Malatya anymore, the, the cemetery is restored. A chapel uh, has been uh, erected in the cemetery, a first ever since 1915. Um, and, I mean, yeah, I mentioned that, you know, the cultural and, uh, and the religious uh, awareness and, uh, you know, revival. It's, uh, revival is a big word, of course. It's not really a revival. But uh, I uh, it, would be, uh, uh, it would be unfair to not to mention Ani, of course, the, 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 the legendary historic Armenian town in the, by the Armenian border. It's a huge, it's, it's a city. It's not a village. It's uh, it's a city. I mean, now some some re restoration works have started finally, uh, and um, 
the, uh, the, the authorities are also involved in it. And, uh, and, uh, and the good work continues. Now, where do we go from here? Of course, you are probably asking yourself, yourselves, are all these, you know, activities, all these uh, works, or these, you know, all these uh, recalling, or all these, you know, facing the reality, will that help to the, the state to, to, uh, to recognize the Armenian genocide? Because many people has, uh, you know, has this in mind. I mean, I wouldn't be that optimistic. Uh, we are far from it, still, despite the fact that, that it's not the, the same political class that is in charge since 10, 12 years. But still, the state has its own um, habits, has its own uh, reflexes, has its own, you know, um, uh, rigidity. Uh, it's and uh, stubbornness and uh, and the, the the parties, the political parties, and for the matter, the the, the, the political Islamists now, the AK, the rule, ruling party, despite the fact that they were quite liberal when it comes to the, the you know the non-Muslims and the memory works and the policies of memory, letting them go ahead. They stop short of, you know, recognizing all this in the name of the state. It's 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 not easy. It is not easy, not because the uh, you know they are uh, you know uh, uh, unwilling or that there are some very you know sincere people among them. For other reasons, the, the first one is that the, the state. This very state, which is the continuation of the Ottoman state, after all, is the one which organized all these massacres. So an unbeaten state like the Dritte Reich, uh, you know, would never ever recognize its faults just by itself. It just won't happen, and it won't happen. Very difficult. This is the, the main difficulty. And we all know, know that with the Sev Treaty of 1920, you know, the, the Turkish state recognized its, uh, you know, the, the, uh, its, its fault, actually. And uh, with the uh, Lausanne Treaty of 1923, everything was reversed and everything was for, forgotten. So this is a major impediment, which can be, in my opinion, challenged only if the healthy memory works that are taking place at the level of the Turkish society continue and go ahead and get, and get deeper and deeper. So to challenge the official narrative one day. There is no other way. Within this, uh, along the same lines, the uh, the organizers of the Armenian deportation and the genocide, uh, where you know they found jobs with the Kemalist regime after 1923. One fantastic example is uh, a man called Shukru Kaya, you know, who was uh, one of the top. Uh, you know, Ittihadist, the Young Turk, the you know the government uh, who who was active in in the deportation of the Armenians, he became Mustafa Kemal's interior minister. I mean, you know, so, <laughs> as simple as that. I mean, so there there is a continuum between the the two states. Not to mention the fact that that many. People, people were bought out by the, the state, bought out in the, in, the, in the very sense of the word, 
because the property, you know, confiscated a big, you know, amount of, uh, you know, uh, uh, land and, uh, and monuments, etc., were confiscated, were distributed by the state to many people. So the state made out of the, of, out of the people, we are talking about 13 million inhabitants, mind you, not of 77 million of today. So the, the state has distributed the confiscated property and the goodies of the Armenians and Greeks to the local people, especially the Kurds, who became, in a way, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, who became involved, you know, uh, in the in the in the in the indirectly or directly some sometimes in the deeds of the government and uh, and one last word i mean this is about the what what i keep calling the this memory works you know healthy i i think that this deep you know feeling of people who uh, you know who are now really Starting to think over the uh, the past of Turkey, but not only of Turkey, also of Syria, Iraq, uh, Lebanon. I mean the, the Turkish Middle East or the Ottoman Middle East, but also, you know, the Balkans. By the way, you know, uh, a memory work calls for another memory work. Now p people start to. Those who start to think of, uh, of, of, of the fate of Armenians, they also start to learn about the fate of the, of the Muslims in the Balkans who were expelled and slaughtered, you know, also after the Balkan Wars of 1912-1913. You know, no one mentions them. You know, Bulgarians, Greeks, you know, they, uh, they, 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 of course, uh, historians know about it, but I mean, at the level of the society, these are, you know, forgotten uh, things. I mean, the, the 19th century Europe is full of this sort of stories of what we call to today ethnic cleansing, actually, or religious cleansing. I mean, it was all over the place. But some were told, some were taught, some were spoken, some were not. So now, you know, while talking about the Armenian genocide, we also talk about the expulsion of Muslims from the Balkans and exp expulsion of Muslims from the uh, Caucasus, for instance. Also another story, you know, which was, is also untold, you know, by the, with, the, with the Russian Empire pushing, you know, uh, all through the 19th century with the, the defeat of uh, uh, of the of the uh, of the local Muslim uh, people, so so I think it's an o it's an overall recollection of memory that is taking place, and uh, and of course the uh, the present times are are far from being conducive for especially in uh, in uh, in northern Mesopotamia for more healthy works, unfortunately, I repeat. But uh, at least as far as uh, the Turkey is concerned, this uh, good work will certainly continue. Uh, and uh, and uh, I always use the, the, the formula the, uh, and, and, uh, and like the, 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 the formula uh, of of the genies which are in the bottle, you know the genies they are in the bottle. Now the genies are completely out of the bottle, and they will never get back in in Turkey. Thank you. <laughs>